Is data privacy the same as data and analytics ethics? I'd say no, and here's why. Data privacy uh, is related to data and analytics ethics, but it's not the same thing. But ethics is more around what we should do. Regulation is more about what we can or are allowed to do. And so as we think about data analytics ethics, it's more about doing the right thing and, and sort of that intersection of what we want to do, what we can do, what we're um, allowed to do regulatorily, but then more importantly, what fits with our value systems and, and what's appropriate. So when we're talking about data analytics ethics, it's not so much the machine being ethical as you know, a machine is only can only do what it's designed to do or what it's told to do. Um, but as we think about data analytics ethics, it starts at the very beginning with the data itself is, you know, it, is the data we're basing our models on, was it gathered appropriately? Is it being used as, as intended as, as those who provided the data uh, intended the data to be used? And then even within the data, what are the attributes? Um, certain things might be acceptable uh, to be used in one context and not in another. It, additionally, as we think about the use of models and the development of models, there's, there's certainly certain types of data attributes that I think we might all agree that are, are inappropriate uh, to be used in, in, a, in, in most any context. Um, but there's also sort of proxy variables that might be there. So aspects that are built into the data um, that we might not recognize on the surface. So we need to be able to monitor the models, not only for that they're, that they're working as intended, but what are the outcomes coming out of them? And so if you, you need to supervise models all the way from the beginning to the understanding how the data was collected, understanding how the model was developed, and then finally, how is it actually being used and, and implemented? Um, and so ethics encompasses really in, in the data analytics space encompasses all those areas. Really, as we work more and more with complex data sets with at sometimes sensitive data, um, we need to make sure that we understand how it's being used and, and we monitor it along the way. And so we developed an oversight board comprised of senior individuals from throughout the business uh, to, to represent uh, different points of view, but also um, be on the lookout to, to make sure that, that we're doing things in the right way. Uh, this group is responsible for not only um, setting the principles and, and, and making sure that they're well known throughout the organization, but ultimately, as a sort of a final decision maker, go, no go, uh, do we think a certain application is appropriate, not appropriate, and, and communicate that as well to the organization. We call them principles because they, they, they kind of lay out, a, you know, sort of a, a guidepost, if you will. Now, I will say within those principles, there are certain ones that I would call more of a rule or a line in the sand, uh, things that we absolutely, we believe are absolute, that there's a, there's a, you know, sort of a black and white delineation. Oftentimes, though, in ethics, it's, it's, you get into gray areas. And so having that guideline, guidance there that we can then kind of fall back on and discuss issues. Again, how, how a model is developed, how the data that it's based on is used, is gonna be unique to certain situations. And so you need to be able to talk through it and understand how it's gonna be used, the context it's gonna be used, the particular markets it's in um, it, as well. The technology and, and the complexity of data itself continues to, to, to grow. And as, as we think about the expanding use of technology, the, the higher complexity of data, we, we have the ability to do more and more complex things with, with our models, with the technology. And certainly as we think about that, we need to be thinking about 
not only you know what we can do and what we'd like to achieve, what's regulatorily allowed, but more importantly, what should we be doing? And so, if you take if you think of it as kind of a, a Venn diagram that that takes what we what we'd like to do, what we're technologically able to do, regulatory com- constraints. There's yet that other uh, another circle in the diagram, if you will, that is, talks about what we should be, what we should do, and just because we can do it doesn't mean we should. As we think about data and its its use in this case in the insurance industry, um, it absolutely can be a force for good. In this case, as we have the ability to, to access more complex data sets that allows us to um, offer, make offers to potential customers that we couldn't have made before, certainly in a more timely basis than we would have been able to do before, and, and really in a, in a more seamless fashion at times. Now, the, the, it comes down to, in the end, um, how we go about it. Um, are we considering uh, the, the perspective and the viewpoint of all the stakeholders that are out there, including the individual uh, that we're dealing with. But ultimately, used properly, data and analytics can lead to a better customer experience and, and a, a higher level of, of, of concentration on the customer. As we think more about using data uh, for good, um, one of those ways would be to make financial protection accessible for, mo- for all, for more people. And so being able to access uh, access data, use data responsibly, develop models, can allow us to assess risk in new ways, can allow us to reach customers that we haven't been able to reach in the past and provide products that, you know, let's face it, insurance is something people know they need, but they don't necessarily want. And so the more we can we can make it accessible to them, both in terms of, of, of offering it to them and making them aware of what their choices are, as a customer, but also then assess that risk and, and get the get the protection in force in a seamless fashion is, is a positive. There's certainly the, the, the appropriate collection of data and should it be collected or not and, and what kind of data should be collected, but more importantly is how it's going to be used. Oftentimes when an individual gives their consent to to use data, it's being used for a certain purpose. And as long as we stay within those purposes, then there should be a general agreement that, that yes, that, that, that meets, that meets sort of that contract, if you will, that was made up front to the extent that we don't, that we go outside of those purposes, that's where we start to get into the inappropriate or, or unethical use of data. I would say, however, as, as long as we're thinking about, properly being properly communicating as, as, as long as we're transparent in how data is used, um, not only sort of who's going to use it and what they're using it for, but, but ultimately, you know, be able to point back to how decisions are made based on the use of data. Um, that trans- transparency goes a long ways towards trust. And, and with any, you know, in any customer relationship, you need to have that trust. Um, as soon as you have machines making decisions, that level of trust becomes all the more important.